modern camera because this camera is genuinely slow. Hi guys, my name is Matis Lanto and I'm a photographer and in this video I'm gonna take a photo walk here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia with the Pentax K01 camera. This is the first and only Pentax mirrorless system camera ever made and uh, before I even start I'd like to say big big thanks to my good friend Robin who very kindly lended me his camera for this video. This camera came out in 2012 and I actually remember this quite well and I even made a review of this camera for my website that doesn't unfortunately exist anymore. And this is a really interesting toy camera looking device and the design really goes against the very conservative flow that the camera designs tend to have. The design is really clean and simple and even though this looks like a toy camera and looks like a plastic camera, it's actually made of aluminum and the build quality feels really really high. It's quite bulky and also quite heavy for a mirrorless design but essentially this is a DSLR without the mirror and viewfinder. This uses the same K mount as every Pentax DSLR and Pentax really did not uh, put much effort into their first mirrorless design and they didn't even try to make uh, like a proper mirrorless camera in my opinion. They just used a shortcut and took out uh, the mirror and viewfinder and that was their mirrorless design. But like I already mentioned, the design is really clean and uncluttered and especially on this white uh, colored camera body, it's really easy to see the black buttons and dials and everything and this camera fits at least in my hand quite nicely because of the bulky design. I get a very nice grip on the camera and uh, all the controls are very clear and it's easy to shoot on this camera and easy to figure out the settings even without reading the manual. And there's only one command dial, but that doesn't matter on a camera like this. I'll just set it on aperture priority and control my aperture with the dial. And there's a separate uh, exposure compensation button here if I need to use exposure compensation. And this camera also has IBIS. And that's one feature that was, if not ahead of its time, but it was pretty advanced at the time in 2012 because not that many cameras had IBIS back then. One really interesting detail is the card slot. Hold on, oh, let me get it open with one hand. The card slot SD card slot is behind this rubber flap on the right side of the camera and at first when the flap is closed you'll think that there is no card slot at all on this camera because when the flap is closed it doesn't look like it's a, a cover for a card slot or something so you really have to know where the card slot is in order to find it. The shooting experience is quite interesting when I compare this to any modern camera because this camera is genuinely slow. First of all, the autofocus is quite slow and quite noisy too. Let's hear it. And whenever you focus, it goes back and forth a few times before it settles down and acquires uh, the proper focus. The focus area is quite good, it's spread all over the frame and you can uh, move the focus point almost to the edges of the frame so that is not a problem, it's just uh, 
focus speed and also after each picture there is about a second and a half blackout in the viewfinder which also makes it uh, quite slow to shoot and you basically if there is a decisive moment you only have one chance to catch that no spraying and praying with this camera the continuous shooting speed is six frames per second so not exactly super fast by modern standards either and when you focus you have to trust the camera because the screen is quite dim and low res so it's really really difficult to verify the focus by eyeballing the screen robin what did you say about the viewfinder blackout it's heavenly you can see the heaven after it blacks out you can peek into the darkness and see stars <laughs> This camera has the same 16 megapixel APS-C sensor as all Pentax cameras back in the day, all Pentax system cameras that is. And the image quality is really good even at high ISO values. This sensor used to be one of the best APS-C sensors back in the day. However, I don't quite get the same crispness out of this camera as I get say from my Ricoh GR3 and I guess it's because of the low pass filter on the sensor in this camera. IBIS of course helps a lot in low light and all in all this camera has quite good feature set. It is sometimes just a little bit hard to take advantage of it or fully exploit all the features because of the super slow autofocus and the viewfinder blackout after each picture. I have the 40 millimeter super thin pancake lens mounted on this camera and this package came as a kit when this camera was new. There were two other kits if I remember correctly, one with one zoom and the other one with two zooms, but this uh, uh, kit was by far the smallest and I guess they tried to somehow compensate the rather bulky design by uh, putting this kit together with the super thin pancake design. One reason why this lens is so tiny and thin is that there is no autofocus motor in the lens. This uses the old fashioned uh, screwdriver type coupling and the autofocus motor actually is in the camera body and it just connects with a screwdriver type uh, uh, slot and uh, blade or whatever you call it to, to then focus the lens. lens equals to about 60 millimeter full frame lens and that is a little bit too narrow to my taste for general photography and if I had a choice I would never choose a lens like this for my street photography or any general photography I would choose something uh, wider like 40 millimeter equivalent or 35 equivalent or even 28 equivalent however I'm pretty flexible and I can shoot with almost any lens if I have to but I would rather take a little bit wider lens for especially for street photography this lens is quite sharp especially when stopped down to about a 4 or a 5.6 then I have absolutely nothing to complain about the sharpness and contrast and the amount of detail that I see in the pictures This is a fun looking camera and very exciting looking camera that still stands out even today. However, as a shooting machine, it was behind the competition even when it came out back in 2012. The only advanced feature it has is the eyepiece. However, I still think it's possible to have fun with this camera and shoot some nice pictures and sometimes maybe the slow 
uh, nature of this camera can teach you to think a little bit before you hit the shutter because you essentially you cannot spray and pray or take quick bursts with this camera at all. And I had a really nice photo walk with this camera and once again big thanks to Robin for lending me this camera so I could try this again after so many years. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little photo walk here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And if you did enjoy this a lot, please do consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that. If you don't live in Finland, your support means a lot to me and it helps me to make more videos for you guys. Thanks and I'll definitely see you in the next video.